So now back to our design. So how should we choose uh, the appropriate font of fonts or combination of the fonts? So here, those are the 10 principles. OK, uh, I think one that is very important is that get familiar with the font families. So the font family means that the the font are related, the fonts are related uh, with each other. And sometimes you can combine the sans serif font with uh, serif font. OK, um, however, so uh, you should make sure that there is a contrast. OK. And when you combine different fonts, make sure that you are not combining two fonts that are very, very similar. OK, and pay attention to the font mood. Remember that different font can give you different uh, feelings. OK, and do not choose too many fonts. So normally two to three fonts are ideal, so will be enough. OK. Um, and also combine fonts of the uh, based on the uh, consider the place where people are going to view the fonts. OK, um, and also, again, as I said, make sure that you, if you choose fonts, so if you stick to the same font family, so you should be fine. And also avoid using some font that are really hard to read. OK, and also are really not make sounds like are not serious. So for example, if you put this one on your data visualizations, uh, I don't think anyone can understand what are you talking about. OK, so let's just go through those 10 rules uh, very quick. Again, so those are, I, be, I think basically those are the similar rules so that, um, as we said earlier, so establishing a hierarchy, a, a visual hierarchy, consider the context. Uh, and could choose a complementary fonts, mix the fonts, and create contrast, uh, but stay away from the font conflicts. Okay, avoid fonts that are too similar, and um, and you can use fonts in the same families. So those should be uh, considered safe fonts or safe choice, and also limit the number of the fonts, and also try to different. Um, uh, examples, scenarios that practice makes the perfect. OK, so this is an example that the fonts have different um, feelings to them, so that create different moods and also associated with different um, personalities. So for example, you may use bubble letters for birthday part invitation, but that wouldn't be appropriate for a business memo. OK, um, and also you can use both italic headlines and also sub headlines and captions to organize how the letters and also characters are read on the page. OK, and a good way to organize a font based on hierarchy is determine that which information is the most important. OK, so which information is most important? OK and make that to stand out. <clears throat> OK, and also keep in mind that where your font will be placed. OK, so use a font that will be easy to read in a space that provided in the and also as well as the font size to help readability. OK, um, another aspect of content and realizing that when to use neutral font uh, was something that grab your attention. OK, so for the title, if you want to grab the attention and uh, for the paragraph, so you may want to use a neutral font so that to tell the content of your story. And also, as long as you stay in the same type family, uh, serif and a sans serif tend to look great. OK, so this is an example that use sans serif and also serif. Uh, you can also achieve contrast in a number of the ways, such as size, okay, um, color, serif or sans serif, space, etc. So differences in font can help make separate rules for the font 
lighting them showing different information. Okay, date and also title. Okay, so this is uh, here is how the hierarchy being used. You can notice that the very large font size. <clears throat> okay, and also choice of the font for the top level font. The middle level is blue. Okay, and on the dashboard, it's also used to highlight the two important recent um, period. Okay, the most recent rating period. And if the top layer font were blue, it would completely dominate this visualization. So that having the top level in the light gray and the middle level in blue creates a kind of a balance of the font levels. Okay, so this is how this dashboard looks like. Okay, so this is a great design in terms of the font. Okay, and also itself is also great uh, data visualization design. Okay, uh, while well, the contract can help in font design, so avoid the fonts that are significantly significantly different. Okay, and also you should also try to avoid the fonts that are very similar. Okay, so because you are unable to establish the hierarchy. Okay, so font in the same families are usually made to work together well. So it is a good idea to merge different font from the same families to create the variation needed for the good design. Again, so that means you need to be familiar with different uh, font families. Okay, and also to stick with two or three fonts. So similar as the colors, so do not use too many types of the fonts. Uh, in your uh, data visualizations. And finally, practice makes perfect. So try to make different uh, visualizations, try to use different fonts, and also you will see which one that you like the most. And also, again, learn from great examples. Okay, learn from the other examples. Uh, <clears throat> so here, this is an example that have a great font choice. So it has a very clear hierarchy. And also you can see the use of the size of the numbers. OK. And and the count mix of serif and also sans serif. OK, so it's really a beautiful um, dashboard design. Uh, so since we're talking about font, so let's also uh, spend a few uh, minutes talking about the word. So uh, word cloud <coughs> are not great for uh, quantitative comparisons. So uh, they also have other issues. So for example, when you're visualizing a single word or when you're visualizing a, phrases, a phrase, so they may give you different ideas. And also whether or not your audience know the context. So this is the word cloud of the President Bush State of the Union speech from 20, uh, 2002. Okay, so that is following the September uh, 11, 911. Okay, so here we see a lot of words like weapons, terror, terrorist, war, etc. And this one is the Obama's State of the Union address. So that is in 2010 where we are uh, immediately following the financial crisis. OK, <clears throat> so we can see like the job, government, new future, etc. So in both cases, uh, we understand that what is going on in those word clouds it's because we understand the context of word. So we are uh, describing. So but what if we don't have that context? So in this case, it is hard uh, so this is um, using the data that students review from a university. OK, so do you think the students think that university is good or bad? It is hard to tell, right? So we see great and also we also see terrible. OK, so without the context, it is very hard to understand what they are talking about. So this example that using single phrase 
or using multi-words, multi-word phrase. Okay, so on the left side, we can see like Gaga, York, etc. And on the right side, we can see Lady Gaga, New York, okay, up west side, etc. <clears throat> Okay, so this is a dashboard that uh, this is the word cloud that created from an Excel blog. So that's why that uh, we have an Excel that is very big in the word cloud. And this is a very great uh, dashboard design. Uh, the colors, the font, etc., and also choose the right appropriate um, uh, uh, charts, etc. So uh, the the word cloud is also very nice, but you can also imagine that. So, uh, is that really necessary using word cloud here? So, I mean, uh, if you are using a bar chart or if you are using the other type of the visualiz visualizations like tree map, etc. So, that might be easier to for a more accurate comparison. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is another example of the word cloud that is. The pager data that from 911, which was published by WikiLeaks. Okay. And you all see a running time on the bottom of the screen in five minutes incrementals and the words that are being sent throughout the day. Um, I think this is a very powerful visualization. Okay, and you can see the time. <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to stop here to save the time. So if you are interested, uh, you can just check this video uh from this url okay um so now we see a word cloud and also a video of the word cloud so the author of that video also created this set of the charts okay um so that the notes on the, his website that perhaps a more useful view of the data is provided by this set of timeline graphs <clears throat> 